Have you ever arrived at work or school only to realize that that one important file you need has been left on your computer hard drive at home? If that's ever happened to you, or if you just want to be able to connect to your local computer from anywhere in the world, then an FTP server is probably what you need. In this episode of Tech Report, I'm going to be showing you how to set up your own FTP server. So setting up an FTP server is actually a really simple task that doesn't require any hardware modifications to your computer at all. All you need is FTP server software, such as FileZilla, which happens to be the one that I use. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go and you want to and download your FTP program. As I said, I use FileZilla. Now you can use any FTP serving program. However, the one that I use is FileZilla, and that's what I'm going to be referring to in this video. Now, FileZilla is only for Windows, so if you run a Macintosh operating system or Linux, then you're going to have to find a different FTP server program. However, the setup is probably going to be similar. So, you want to go to the FileZilla website. That's pretty easy to do. It's going to be one of the first couple of links on Google. Uh, then you want to make sure you download the FileZilla server and not the FileZilla client. The difference is that FileZilla server will allow you to set up your computer to serve files over the internet, whereas FileZilla client allows you to connect to various FTP servers. Once the exe file is finished downloading, you want to install it as you would any other program, keeping for the most part the default options intact. After you've installed FileZilla, you want to run the FileZilla user interface and log in to your local computer. Okay. So after, after running FileZilla for the first time, you should be presented with a window similar to this. The first thing you have to do is add users who can log into your FTP server. You do that by clicking on the Add Users button near the top of the screen in the toolbar. This presents you with a window similar to this. Click on the Add button in the right-hand side and type in the name of the user account that you want to add. In my case, I'm going to use Chris. You want to make sure the Enable Account button is ticked off and I would also recommend the use of a password. Make sure that button is checked and uh, use whatever password you'd like. The next thing we want to do is go down to the Shared Folders option, which should be just under General, and click on Add. At this point, you can choose any local disk on your computer or file that you want to be able to access on your, uh, from the internet. In this case, I'm just going to use the C drive, but keep in mind you can use any, any disk, drive, or folder that you would like. Now, at this point, all you have to do is hit OK. The window should disappear, and uh, your settings should be saved into FileZilla. That's all you have to do for the setup part of things. Now, the thoughts that are probably going through your mind right now is, how do I connect to my FTP server? Well, that we're also going to cover in this video. The first thing we should do for testing purposes is to make sure that our FTP server is indeed serving files over our local network. To verify this, Go to the Run dialog and uh, run. type in cmd, cmd.exe. This will bring up a command prompt window similar to the one that I've got here. Type in ipconfig and press enter. That'll give you um, a list of all your uh, network connections uh, that are enabled at that moment in time. Look through and find your IP address and uh, write that down on a piece of paper. Open up a web browser on your local computer or any other, any other computer on the network and type in FTP slash slash and then the IP address that you looked up in the previous step. Type in your username and password and you should be presented with a screen that shows you all your files. If the window doesn't load in your web browser, it might be that the firewall on your FTP computer is blocking uh, incoming connections. In order to test this, disable Windows Firewall or whatever other firewall program you're using and see if you can connect to that computer. If you can, then you're going to have to adjust your, fire, your firewall settings in order to allow FTP. Okay, so now that we've verified that we can access our FTP server on our local network, let's see if we can access it from any internet connected computer. To do this step, you'll need to look up the internet IP address uh, for your local network. You can do that by going to a site such as whatsmyip.org. 
In my case, my, IP ad my internet IP address starts with a 24.68, whereas my local IP address starts with a 192. Your local IP is the one assigned by the router and can only be accessed from computers connected to your local network, whereas your internet IP address can be accessed by any computers uh, in the world that are connected to the internet. Open up a web browser on your local computer or any other computer connected to the internet and type in FTP colon, colon double slash followed by your internet IP address and see what happens. If you're prompted with a dialog box asking for your username and password, great, that means you're already online. However, what most of you will find is that your router now is blocking incoming connections from the internet that are trying to access uh, your FTP server. This can easily be fixed by modifying some of your router settings. I'm going to go through that with you now. The first thing you want to do is uh, look up the IP address for your router or network switch. Now, the, IP, the default IP addresses are different for just about every brand of router, so you're going to want to consult either the uh, specification sheet on the internet for your router, or if you still have it, uh, your user manual. After that, just go to any old web browser, type in the IP address for your router, and uh, log in. Again, you're going to have to check your uh, user manual for the default password and username to log into the router. Once you get into your router, you should be presented with a screen similar to this. Although, depending on your brand of router, yours may differ slightly. You're going to want to navigate your way to a page which allows you to configure virtual server settings. Again, this may be buried under advanced networking tools or some other submenu, so you might have to uh, play around a little bit before you find it. Now you want to add a new virtual server. Title it FTP or something uh, you can remember, and make sure that public and private ports 21 are both enabled. Lastly, you want to uh, type in the IP address of the local computer that your FTP server is installed on. Save your settings and reboot the router if necessary. Access your FTP server from any internet connected computer by punching in your internet IP address into the uh, URL bar of any popular web browser. Now all your files are only a couple of keystrokes away. For Tech Report, this is Christopher reporting.